Hi, I'm Dr. Jason J. Campbell, and I'm going to thank you for taking the time to watch my videos. In this video today, I'm going to um, continue a discussion that I started uh, many, many months ago on symbolic logic. Um, I often get a question, what text do I use for symbolic logic? I have a lot that I use, but uh, typically I use uh, symbolic logic. It's the fifth edition by Kopi. This is the one that I was taught um, using. My symbolization is sort of hybrid. Um, Kopi uses symbols for a conjunction that I, I don't use. He uses a horseshoe, I use an arrow. Um, but for the most part, um, this is the text that I use, Kopi's Symbolic Logic, 5th edition. It's a great, great edition. Um, so this is what I use. Um, what I'm going to do in this discussion is I'm going to continue and actually conclude um, one section of my sort of ongoing discourse on Symbolic Logic. Also, if you want to watch the, all the videos on Symbolic and Modal Logic, just Logic in general, um, click the link. I'll have a link to the playlist, and the playlist will have, um, I think there's 10 videos on symbolic logic, five or six videos on modal logic, and then the epistemic modal question that I asked. Um, just a quick aside, I haven't yet received the, um, the answer for the epistemic modal logic question. There's a few of them that I'm working through. Uh, I can't get into some of the complications that that presents in this discussion. In this discussion, what I want to do is I want to show you the third and final um, method of assessing the validity of an argument using symbolic logic. Um, so I'll write that on the board, I'll tell you what I've presented so far, and show you this new method. Okay, um, so this is the, the third uh, approach to assessing the validity, and it's known as reductio ad absurdum. Right, so this is um, assessing validity with reductio, okay, R-E-D-U-C-T-I-O, okay, uh, assessing validity using with uh, reductio ad absurdum. Um, remember in assessing vid validity, and I, I don't remember exactly what videos uh, I did this in, but I said that we can check validity three ways, right? There, there, there's more, but for now, um, we can assess validity using three methods. Okay, the first method that I showed you was the method of using truth tables. The first method that I showed you was I showed you how to assess validity using truth tables. Um, you will need to understand how to assess validity using truth tables in order to understand how to assess validity using the process of reductio ad absurdum. Um, I have a video on using truth tables. I don't remember which one it is. It might be like symbolic logic four videos four through seven or four through six or something like that. Um, so truth tables is a method you will need to know how to um, assess validity using truth tables in order to understand how to use um, reductio ad absurdum to assess validity. The second approach is known as truth trees. And I showed you how to assess validity um, using truth trees. Um, many people often don't use truth trees. Uh, truth trees are simpler than truth tables. So if you're using truth tables to use um, to assess validity, then I would recommend that you use truth trees because truth trees are easier than truth uh, tables in assessing the validity of an argument. Again, I've uh, discussed and demonstrated examples of how to use truth trees in assessing the validity of the argument, and um, the process of using truth trees is easier than the process of uh, using truth tra tables. You can imagine if you have um, an argument with five or six premises uh, and a conclusion, or maybe even two sub-conclusions, um, using truth tables, your truth table can be very, very huge. You can have, uh, you know, pages in uh, calculating your truth table um, to assess the validity. That's a lot of work. You can um, minimize that work by using truth trees. And you can even further minimize that work by using the third process, which I'm going to discuss now, which is uh, the process of reductio ad absurdum. So the final process in assessing the validity of um, an argument within the confines of symbolic logic 
is reductio ad absurdum. As we go from uh, 1 to th 3, we decrease, decrease in uh, um, amount of computation. See how MPUTA. Okay. So as, as we move from um, truth tables to reductio ad absurdum, in assessing the validity of our arguments, we decrease the amount of computation that's needed, right? A lot of computation needed to assess the validity of an argument using truth tables, less computation needed to assess the validity using truth trees, and the least amount um, using reductio ad absurdum. And today what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to use it, um, using how to assess validity using reductio ad absurdum. I went online, obviously, to YouTube to check to see if there were any videos on assessing validity um, using the process of reductio ad absurdum, and I didn't see any. Um, so that's good. This will be the first, uh, to my knowledge, this will be the first video um, using reductio ad absurdum to assess validity. Okay. Um, what sense can we make of uh, reductio ad absurdum, and what role does reductio ad absurdum play in the assessment of validity? Alright. The first thing to recognize The first thing to recognize is um, reductio ad absurdum. What does that mean, right? Reductio, the ability to reduce, reduction, ad absurdum to the absurd, right? So a, a reduction to impossibility, right? And then a reduction to absurdity. If you can reduce an argument to its contradiction, um, then we can say that the process that we're using is this process of reductio ad absurdum. In the use of reductio ad absurdum to assess the validity, um, I'm going to try and make it as simple as possible, right? Um, and this is the easiest way. I, I, I went over and deliberated uh, several approaches to, to teach, to instruct you on how to use reductio, and I, I think that this is the, the simplest approach to um, assessing the validity. Okay, um, in assessing the validity of an argument, what we need to recognize is that each argument that we have will have premises. So, right? so you'll have premises 1, you'll have premises 2, all the way down to um, premises n, whatever that might be. Then you'll have your conclusion, right? Um, as you know, we determine the validity of an argument if the premises are true and the conclusion is true. Right? So our argument will be valid. Right? If we have true premises and a true conclusion, then our argument is valid. Right? If our argument is invalid, what ends up happening is that we have true premises with a false conclusion. You cannot have uh, a valid argument wherein the premises for your argument are true, but your conclusion that follows from those premises is false. If, if you start with true premises and you end in a false conclusion, and I've done this lecture before, so I'm not going to get into too much detail on this now, then your argument is uh, invalid, right? So you cannot, have, you cannot have this. You can't have a state of affairs where your premises are true and the conclusion that you reach is false because then your argument is invalid. What we do with reductio ad absurdum is we attempt to see if it's the case that we can create a state of affairs where our premises are true and our conclusion is false. The way that we do this is we um, interchange um, one of the uh, um, statements, right? one of the, the, the variables within uh, a statement. And if that variable, so for example, let's say uh, one of the variables, let's say one of the variables that we're using is P. Right? If we find out that I assess P, whatever, let's say we assess true to P, and this is just hypothetical, so I, take, I say that P is equal to a true claim and I plug true in for all of these. If I plug true in for everything, and my premises remain true, and my conclusion remains false, right, remains false, by inputting um, true for P, then I know that this argument is invalid, right? This argument cannot be valid, because a valid argument would not allow me to plug in true for P, for example, and then arrive at a conclusion that's false. If, however, in order for me to maintain this true for my premises and false for my conclusion, I have to use 
a combination, right, of true and false for the same variable, right? There's an inconsistency in the appropriation of a truth function to um, a statement, right, or, uh, or a component within a statement, then we recognize that my argument is valid. So to make sure that, uh, just for clarification, I'll, I'll sort of write this down because I want this to be clear. If um, a uh, statement, if the statement, if the if the statement letter is inconsistent after assigning if the statement letter is inconsistent after assigning truth value right so for example if p in order for my premises to be true and my conclusion to be false right in order to maintain this, if I want, if this is the goal, and this is the goal, in order to get this true premises and false conclusion, I have to assign both truth and falsity to P, to whatever my um, statement letter is, then we know that your argument is valid. Because there's an inconsistency. The only way that I arrive at this, this uh, um, invalid structure is by the appropriation of an inconsistent use of truth and falsity, the function of truth and falsity, to the statement uh, letter, then my argument is valid, right? So, if, if the statement letter is inconsistent after assigning truth and falsity, my argument is valid. The opposite is true, right? If the, if the statement letter is consistent after um, assigning right so premise premise conclusion true true false if for example for my statement letter P I only assign one variable true or false right and in assigning just this sole truth function, I'm able to attain an invalid structure, then I recognize that my argument is invalid. And now I'll give you an example so that you understand. So basically what we're going to end up to do, and it's going to be, it's actually very, very easy once you understand this. Um, and hopefully, this might not make too much sense now, but once I start um, substituting the, the truth value for the statement letters, It'll be, it'll be much, much more clear. So I'm going to work through a couple of examples, some obvious ones, some not so obvious ones, and we'll assess the truth, um, the not the truth function, but the validity of the argument using reductio ad absurdum. What I would recommend that you do, and I haven't does, done this because I don't have the time to do this, but what I would re recommend that you do is that for the problems that I'm going to put on the board, try and solve the problem using um, truth, uh, using a truth table. And I've showed you how to do that. I explained that in a previous video. Try and solve the same problem using uh, truth trees, and you'll see how much easier it is. And then finally, try and solve the problem the way that I'm doing it now. Work along with me, and you'll see that this way, the, the way of implementing reductio ad absurdum to assessing the validity of uh, an argument is by far the easiest. So, uh, let's begin.